it is PreludeBoy99 here with another Steam Deck video. The last one I did did extremely well with 20,000 views, 236 likes, which really means a lot to me guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Now this is the follow up video. This is going to be a top 5 video, but not just any top 5 video. It's a top 5 Steam Deck verified games. This is going to be a very important video for anybody who has a Steam Deck because these are going to be the top 5 games that you should get. Of course, these are my opinions and, and they are suggestive. With that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Starting off our list is Ghostwire Tokyo. At first glance, I thought this game was a generic anime inspired title, but the visual is what really sold me. This is a horror first person type of game that is voiced and dubbed in Japanese. This game takes place in Tokyo, Japan, and the premise of the game is you're a boy named Akutu Izuki who is on his way to visit his sister, Mari Izuki, who is hospitalized after a house fire incident. Akito gets into a fatal car motorcycle accident on his way to the hospital. A rogue spirit then possesses him while granting him supernatural abilities. This saves him. However, soon after, the citizens of Tokyo have mysteriously disappeared due to a supernatural phenomenon. Rogue spirits are roaming the streets and the f atmosphere is extremely foggy. Sound familiar? Akito must team up with the spiritual saver to save his sister from Hanya, the man stealing spe spirits from other civilians in Tokyo. Personally, I was extremely hooked within the first 15 minutes of playing due to the story and visuals. There's something about walking down an empty street with neon city lights and foggy atmosphere that makes you feel like you're in a futuristic Silent Hill. This game unfortunately does not run at 60 frames per second on the deck, but it does run at 30 to 45 frames per second, which is a smooth enough experience to enjoy. I had to modify my settings to get it to run at that frame rate, but at default settings, the game runs at 30 frames per second. If you want a stable experience, I would recommend locking the frame rates at 30 frames per second. The lowest frame rate drop was at 15 frames per second, and it was during a cutscene near the beginning of the game. Other than that, the game still looks very impressive. I bought the game for around $20 at the Steam store, and for that price, I think it was well worth it. If you like the bone-crushing violence of Doom and the retro-futuristic style of Fallout, the Wolfenstein is the game for you. I never played a Wolfenstein game before, and I heard New Order was a good game to start. Of course, the graphics are a bit dated, but the saving grace is the steady smooth 60 frames per second and killing Nazis. We're going to be doing one thing and one thing only, killing Nazis. I didn't have to modify any settings to have it run at 60 frames per second, which is good for the average gamer. The premise of the game is simple. You're a soldier named William B.J. Blazkowicz who is fighting in an alternate World War II where the Nazis have won the war. After a mission has gone horribly wrong, your character wakes up in a mental hospital being taken over by Nazis. You later find out that the year is 1960 and Nazis have ruled the world. To put it more in simpler terms, you're practically Captain America and now Nazis rule everything. Perfect what-if scenario if you ask me. I bought this game for five dollars and I do not regret it. The battery life on a full charge lasts from three to four hours which is enough time to probably finish the game if you're speedrunning it. The only flaw with this game is that the graphics are not that impressive. This game practically released during the PS3 and Xbox 360 era which was 10 years ago age is starting to show a little bit. Otherwise, this is still a nice title to play when you're at home or on a bus or maybe even on a plane heading to Germany. For the record, I'm not a cat person. I have very little interest in owning a cat until I played this game. Stray is a third-person adventure game, and the premise is you're a stray cat that wanders around an abandoned underground city. You learn how to jump on platforms and solve puzzles throughout the game while also trying to avoid killer robots. You have a companion named B12 who helps you on your journey. The reason I want to play this game is because I love the setting. I think the visuals look amazing for a 6GB game. For anyone who has the base model, like I do, this game is a perfect size that doesn't demand a lot of space. So far the performance of the game is holding steady at 60 frames per second with a few frame drops here and there. Stray is like Blade Runner and Cyberpunk having a baby and that baby decided to have a cat. Uh, 
the vibe of this game is actually extremely mellow and awesome to, to really see unfold. There was times where I just felt myself just wanting to just sit there and soak in everything that's been going on. Especially with the amazing soundtrack that sounds just as good as Silent Hill 2 soundtrack. In the graphical settings, I removed motion blur and film grain to give me a smoother experience. Overall, this game is perfect for anyone who wants a visually appealing game that does demand space and a story full of heart. You've seen open world zombie games before, but have you seen open world parkour zombies? Parkour! When I first played this game in my PS4 era, I didn't know what to expect. At first, I thought it was a Walking Dead spin-off that features a first-person perspective, but I was wrong. The premise of the story is that you're a man named Crane, who is an agent for a government organization named the GRE. Haran is being devastated with a deadly virus outbreak turning Haran's citizens to zombies and other mutant creatures. Your mission is to find a rogue political figure in, of Haran named Rias to retrieve sensitive info about the virus. I was stunned by how well this game plays. I was expecting 30 frames per second locked, but it was able to run at 60 frames per second locked. Of course, you will have to dabble with the video settings to have it at 60 frames per second locked, but overall it runs at 40 to 50 frames per second on default settings. Dying Light is not a first person shooter. It can be, but it is really more focused on melee combat. You have tools that you can use to upgrade your melee weapons, like swords, katanas, even a pipe wrench. Uh, essentially, this game is really focused on beating the absolute brains out of zombies with melee items, and it's, that's where it totally shines. Of course, you could bring a gun into the mix, but then you'll attract uninvited guests. Did I also mention that Dying Light has a day and night cycle? The daytime is usually when you have to deal with raiders and normal zombies. At night, you have to deal with the volatiles. Volatiles are practically steroided zombies that can run as fast as hell and can pretty much deal a whole bunch of damage. This is a ton of fun to be had with its huge world and gut smashing combat. This is a must buy for anyone who wants open world action, especially the undead variety. Before Resident Evil 7, we had PT Silent Hills that injected life into the horror genre. When the game was cancelled in March of 2015, RE7 picked up the pieces two years later. Resident Evil was an action franchise from Resident Evil 4 to Resident Evil 6, and it truly lost its survival horror identity. Resident Evil 7 is an amazing return to form to what the franchise is known for. RE7 is the first person survival horror experience that keeps you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. The premise is that you play a husband in search of his wife. Well, I'm not talking about Silent Hill 2. You play average Joe Ethan Winters who is in search of his missing wife Mia Winters. After rec receiving a cryptic message from Mia, he travels to Dovey, Louisiana to search for more clues. I will leave the premise there because I do not want to spoil anything more because it's best if you go in blind. Yes, it is the seventh entry in Resident Evil, but you don't need to play any of the other ones to understand what's going on in this one. This one is kind of in its own world, while also having references to previous games, but nothing that ruins the story. The game runs flawlessly at 60 frames per second, and it looks visually impressive after six years. The RE engine was designed for Resident Evil 7, which is a photorealistic engine that Capcom engineered to use. You could find this game for $20, but Halloween is right around the corner, and you can grab this for easily $10, which is a steal in my opinion. So, that was the top 5 verified Steam Deck games that you can get on the Steam Deck. Let me know what you guys think about this video, uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe for more, share it, it really does help, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.